Okay, so in the last few videos, we've been talking quite a bit about cross products and vector products and how to calculate them. And I mentioned a few times that learning how to do cross products is important. And that was because they relate very much so to what's called a moment in statics. Now, in other fields, you might know a moment to be a torque or some kind of a rotational force. So when you apply a torque to a rod or a rigid body, that's essentially what a moment is. It's really a rotational force. But more, I guess, clearly or explicitly, the definition of a moment is that it's a vector quantity that is used to describe a rotation on a point on a rigid body. So let me write that down. So there's a decent amount in this definition. So we have our moment, and our moment is a vector quantity. And that's really important because vectors or moments are not just numbers themselves, but they are indeed vectors. So they have a magnitude and a direction. And now, so a, a moment is a vector quantity that is used to describe a rotation at a point on a rigid body. So over here, the best way to sort of explain this is in a two-dimensional example. So excuse my artistic abilities, but in this diagram or this picture, there is a bolt, a bolt that you use to build things and piece things together, and it is screwed right into the page of this video. And on this bolt, we have a wrench. So we use the wrench to tighten uh, this bolt into the paper. So if I were to apply a force at the end of this wrench, and I said this is force F, you can intuitively see that this wrench is going to rotate this way, and it's going to cause this bolt right here to rotate about its center, which is this point right here. So this scenario has a force, which is F, that's being applied perpendicular to the line of this wrench and it's causing a rotation about this point. Now, this is important because the mathematical definition of a moment is this right here. We have a moment about some point O, and remember, we have an, a vector arrow drawn over M because moment is a vector quantity. And the moment, oops, I should do that in ink, the moment itself is calculated as R cross F. Now, this F right here is this force right here, the force that's actually causing a rotation about this point. However, this R right here, you if you're unfamiliar, the R vector is usually called a position vector. And that position vector goes from the point of origin that this moment is acting on, or this moment is being applied, to the line of action for F. So in this case, for this wrench tightening this bolt, the position vector R would start right here at the origin of this bolt because that's where the moment is being applied, and it would extend all the way to the line of action for F. Now remember, the line of action is this right here, the line that goes right through the direction of the force that's being applied. And you'll notice that this position vector right here and this line of action right here create a 90 degree angle with one another. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that position vector in like so, and it's gonna extend all the way here. And I'll just call this R. Now, the reason this is important and the reason this 90 degree angle right here is important is because we need to understand how to calculate the magnitude of this moment. So the magnitude of this moment right here is going to be, if you remember from previous definitions of a cross product, you have the value of R, the value of F, times the sine of the angle between them. Well, the angle between these two vectors is just 90 degrees. And we know that the sine of 90 is 1. So really, the magnitude of this moment is really the value of R times the value of F. That's how we calculate the magnitude of this moment. Now, earlier, I did say that a moment is a vector quantity, right? So 
a vector crossed with another vector gives us another vector here. But you might ask, well, which way is this vector pointing? Which way is this moment going? Because it is a vector, therefore it has a magnitude and a direction. Well, the direction, if you remember from the right-hand rule videos, anytime you do a cross product and you incorporate the right-hand rule, especially of a 2D plane right here, the resulting vector, the cross product, is either going into the page or out of the page. Now, in this case, if we're doing R cross F and you take the right-hand rule where R is facing this way, F is facing this way, and you curl your fingers this way, you can see that your thumb is pointing out of the page, right? But if we did the cross product the other way where we curled our fingers this way, your thumb would be pointing into the screen. But in this case, we have this scenario where F is going this way, R is going this way, and you're taking your right hand and you're curling your fingers this way, and so your thumb is coming out of the page. So that is the direction of this moment right here. The moment is coming out of the page. Now, in 2D scenarios like this, it's a little hard to show that. So instead, what we do is we draw this sort of curved arrow around this point right here. And we say, this is the moment. And so in most times in textbooks, you'll see this right here, where you have this arrow pointing this way, or it might be going the other way. And that indicates the direction of the moment itself. So in most cases, the moment, if it's acting in a counterclockwise direction, that is taken to be positive. And if it's acting in a clockwise direction, that is negative or into the page. So positive is out of the page and negative is into the page.